esteemed guests and welcome back to my channel. So a little while ago, I went to a garage sale and I found this really cool grandma vase. Woo! It's amazing. I love this trumpet style. Frankly, for the last six months, it has been sitting inside of my pantry, waiting there in sadness for someone to fill its emptiness. I feel really empty inside. Me too, face. Me too. Anyways, I figured we would permanently fill the void in my vase and temporarily fill the one in my brain and make a bouquet that is fit for a monster, which is me. I'm a monster. Or at least that's what my brain tells me every night before I try to go to sleep. Remember that one time when you farted and it smelled really bad and then you blamed it on the dog? Well, he felt bad and he has a complex now. You suck. Anyways, let's get started. When I got my vase, it was pretty dirty from the garage sale, so I gave it a good old wash and decided to let it dry while we worked on a couple of other things. First up, I thought I'd go ahead and give myself a general idea of what it is that we're gonna be making, and we're going to be putting some flowers and some eyes and a cute little mouth on the vase itself. I don't know why I'm lovingly stroking this flower, but you know, I hope it appreciates it. You saucy minx. That was a demonstration of my flower fluffing technique. Now that our flowers are satisfyingly fluffed, I'm going to be building the centers out of aluminum foil and polymer clay. I'm going to start by crumpling up a piece and making sure that it's going to fit inside of the flower's center satisfyingly before recreating that several times. I then shoved my polymer clay into my pasta maker kind of chaotically so that it would flatten out and I was able to cut shapes around the circles of aluminum foil just so that it would form nicely. This process kind of reminds me of making those pigs in a blanket where you slice up the Pillsbury dough and then you wrap it around the hot dog, except these are way less appetizing. So once I had finished wrapping up the big boys, I then realized that I was going to have to do this process a hundred times and a hundred times smaller for all of the smaller eyes that I had done. Again, I didn't think about it beforehand. I was just like, oh yeah, I can make like 125 miniature eye sockets. That's totally a thing I can do, right? Okay, so I have realized that I have about 175 of these eyes left to sculpt after completing two of them. It's a really long and laborious process. So instead of wasting everybody's time, I'm going to use the power of editing magic to get everything done right freaking now. These guys are just a little bit lumpy and bumpy, so I think it would be a good idea for me to brush some of them down with some rubbing alcohol just to smooth them out a little bit. At this point in time, rubbing alcohol has kind of become my catch-all for any mistakes that I've made, or if I need to smooth something out. It's also really good for removing paint if you spill that on a surface. Just remember to use it in a well-ventilated space so that you do not get dizzy, and also if you are young, ask for an adult's assistance because that stuff's poisonous. Okay, so all of the eyes are finished now. There's just this one guy, he's like, I see you, I'm judging you. I am so excited to be finished all of these tiny little eyelids. <laughs> So now it is time for me to pop this into the oven. Thank goodness. Once the eyeballs were baked so that they were nice and hard, I took some of my art masking fluid and put it on top of all of the little irises to make sure that when we are airbrushing, we do not get any of that paint on the parts that are important. And if you're wondering why I said airbrush like that, I use silly voices to mask my fear, and I am terrified of the airbrush and don't know what I'm doing. Speaking of don't know what I'm doing, I'm using epoxy sculpt for the first time, which is a two-part clay that you use in equal portions on a scale. Oh, it's way firmer than I was anticipating. I put a little paper towel on here because I don't want this cute scale to get ruined. Now with my clean hand, so that this doesn't start hardening. Oh, she's... Also, a strange and unusual texture. <laughs> okay, so we need to get it up to 218. 217.3. 217.9. Just a tiniest little bit on there. 18.1 is gonna have to do. <gasps> oh, it just magically changed to 218. Okay, let's mix these together. I turn you off. Just think of grandma. If any of you are interested in using epoxy clay, I highly recommend that you mix it very thoroughly, which is what I was doing here. Sometimes you can end up with marbling and it will make it so that it won't harden properly. Okay, that's looking pretty uniform to me, but I kind of want to change my gloves because they're so sticky. So that's what we're going to do. Blech. Now came the fun part of finally being able to sculpt onto the vase itself. Initially, I thought that the epoxy clay was really sticky, but I found out that as I was working with it over its kind of two hour span before it hardens, that it gets much easier to work with, especially if you use water. 
I think my favorite tool for this entire project was just a little q-tip that had a point dipped in some water. It really helped to smooth out the edges and make everything look seamless. I also veered off of my initial inspiration from the drawing I had done and realized that if I incorporated this in the right way, I could make something that looked kind of Art Nouveau. For those of you that are unfamiliar, it's an art style that was really popular in the 1920s that involved a lot of swirling shapes and flowers. So after about an hour of using the clay was when it became the most user-friendly for me, I found. I was able to make these really long strips and bend them and stick them into place without any problem and without too much texture on them. It was also really easy at this stage to add finer details like leaves and flowers. I actually used a pair of scissors to cut one of the edges on this flower that I'm putting on here and curl it back. I was shocked at how easy it was to make it smooth and it stuck to the surface. So one hour if you guys don't want to deal with a sticky mess. That's how long you need to leave the epoxy to cure, then you can work with it, or if you're like me, you know, you can get sticky. Now that the masking fluid has dried on those eyeballs, it's time for me to face my worst fear, which is the airbrush. Some of these have this nice little space on the back so I can just pop it on the skewer and it'll be fine, but then others, I did not do that. I forgot to leave a little bit of space, so I'm gonna hot glue them to the skewers so that I can airbrush and stand them up. Okay, so now that I have finished my collection of the world's least appetizing cake pops, I think it's time that we paint them. Oh, this is fun. Check this out, guys. I'm easily amused. So I'm mixing up this paint specific for your airbrush. I decided I was gonna go for a nice sunshine yellow and do sort of a gradient with some red. Initially when I was doing this, I was like, this was a bad choice. They just look angry and irritated and the eyes look infected but I changed my mind later. So last night before I went to sleep, I was not into these and I was thinking I was gonna wake up this morning and redo them, but I kind of love them. So I think it's on to the next stage. Just drop these. My heart is racing so fast right now. You okay? You okay, bro? Is that yours? Oh God. Yeeted itself off of my chair and underneath my desk in very dramatic fashion. You guys remember earlier when I was blowing the airbrush on these and I was laughing because they were wobbling? Yeah, they have their own center of glare. They have their own center of glare. Gravity. gravity. They have their own center of gravity. So like even moving them a little bit like this, like if I'm just, they propelled themselves underneath my desk. Thankfully, nobody's too damaged. Maybe they're sentient and they just don't want me to peel the top layer of their eyes off. I mean, realistically, who would? Would you voluntarily go towards that or would you try to escape if someone was like, yeah, I'm just gonna peel the top layer of your eye. It's, that's fine. That's normal. Despite the eye pop's desperate attempt to flee, I did it to them anyways. Sorry guys, you look a lot better now though. The one thing that made me a little bit sad is that I'm not able to offer you guys those big poles like I normally do. The airbrush paint works with particles, so I had to go around and kind of scrape everything off, but luckily I didn't damage the eye and everything turned out looking pretty good. And obviously I cleaned it up with my rubbing alcohol because I use it for everything. And now back to the vase. I love epoxy sculpt. I love it. It's so good. This is all dry. Can you guys hear that? It makes the same sound. So this is so perfect for sculpting on ceramic. I'm very excited. And now we're going to go through the laborious task of masking all of this off, which is gonna be a lot. I'm kind of scared. I don't know what's going to happen because again, it's the first time I'm doing that, but I'm going to try masking off all of this and then airbrushing it, which as you guys know, I'm not the most confident with, but the only way that you get more confident at something is if you just keep doing it. So we're just gonna keep doing it. And if I mess up, I'm sure I'll find a way to fix it. So let's do that. So the plan is we are just going to cover all of the areas that I don't want airbrushed with this masking tape. Just gonna try going little bitty piece, one little step at a time. Good things come to those who wait or good things come to those who are very patient and just work really hard. I think right now it'd be a good idea for me to go into time-lapse mode because I can already tell that just masking this is probably going to take me a couple of hours. But let's speed things up and I'll see you guys when this is finished. So I have spent three hours doing this. Um, I'm gonna take a little break. I'm gonna go play some board games with my husband. I'm gonna have some snacks. And then I'm gonna come back to this because it's always good to double check your work with a fresh set of eyes to make sure that you didn't miss anything before we go in with the airbrush. So yes, if you guys are wondering how long that took, three hours. I hope it's worth it. 
I'm about to start airbrushing and I would just like to be transparent with you guys that I'm really nervous about how this is gonna go because I have spent an additional two hours making sure that the tape was perfect. So in total, taping this off, I've spent five hours making sure that nothing will get through. And I'm just really scared because this is my first time doing something like this. So wish me luck, please. Because this project has taken me such a long time already, I thought I would add a little bit of extra zest and mix up my own custom paint colors that would really complement and contrast with the existing colors of the vase. Oh. Now because I was so nervous about ruining all of my hard work, I didn't put you guys right up in the spray zone just so that the camera wasn't getting in my way and I could really focus on what I was doing and also so my recording equipment did not get damaged because there is a lot of spray back as you can see here. Look at them clouds go. It looks like it's steaming. I've let this dry for about 20 minutes. It's pretty dry to the touch, so that means that if I accidentally bump it, stuff's not going to come off, so I'm going to start peeling this. I'm so excited! Look at that! <laughs> Who is she? Is she a professional artist? Ooh! <laughs> I actually did a good job! Holy! This feels like- I feel like a six-year-old getting a Nintendo 64 in the 90s. As you can see, I managed to pull this off. There's a couple spots that need a touch up. That's why we have the paint in these bottles. I'm gonna go in with the, my tiniest brush to get these little bad boys. But let me tell you, I'm very proud of myself right now. After I had finished pulling off all of the tape, I decided that I would do something special by adding the whites of the eyes, making the back of the mouth a little bit darker, adding a nice pink tongue, and also adding some teeth details. Oh no, the white seeped through. I'm gonna fix it, it'll be okay. You guys already know that I used rubbing alcohol to fix it, right? Cause that's what I did. Anywho, I finished up all the final details on our vase and then it was on to assembling those flowers together with trusty old hot glue. I wanted to keep the final reveal a little bit of a mystery this time, so all I'm gonna tell you is that I made the arrangement by shoving some of this flower foam into the vase and cramming the flowers in. It worked really well. And now, esteemed guests, it's time for everyone's favorite segment, the moody glamour shots. so much for joining me today my friends this is probably my favorite project that i have made to date i'm very proud of it if you enjoyed today's episode i hope you will go and check out my online shop we've got a bunch of really cool goodies there and if you support me there it helps me to continue making fun content like this i hope you have an awesome day and i hope you're nice to yourself okay i love you bye there are dogs the dogs are excited they're excited to be outside they're yelling at each other they say "Ooh, it's another dog hello mate you want to have a jog Hey, remember at the mall today when you didn't hold that door open for the old lady? She died later. Oh my god, that's bad. That's a bad one. Uh, no! Oh yes. <laughs>